Hello friends, and welcome back to another episode of Last Minute Laura. It feels like it's been such a long time since I've done anything crochet. I've been so obsessed with natural dye, but now I have all of these beautifully dyed yarns and I need to do a project with them. So I've taken it upon myself to design something that is going to include some of my naturally dyed yarns. Also, isn't this cool? The turkey feather. Found it in my backyard. Anywho, for today, what I'm going to be doing is making some kind of off-the-shoulder baggy sweatery type thing. I haven't decided if I'm going to be doing anything with the sleeves, but at this point this is my basic design idea. I've written out some general instructions that I'm going to try and follow, just sort of to get this kind of look. So if a baggy off-the-shoulder sweatery thing is something you're interested in, then uh, keep watching. For this project, you're gonna need a crochet hook. I'm using a five millimeter crochet hook. It's probably the most used crochet hook, so I'm sure if you're at least somewhat into crochet, you probably have five millimeters. If not though, you can use 5.5, 6, 4.54. Um, you just might need to add a few stitches at the beginning or the end just to um, expand or subtract the size of the garment. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the yarns I used as well. So you are going to need some yarn. Today I'm using Briggs & Little Sport Weight Wool. You can see it's a one-ply, very, uh, I'm gonna call it a loosely twisted one-ply. I used bleached white to color all of my yarns. For this reddish brown color, I actually use plum branches and orange pico tea bags to achieve this color. For this bluish gray, I used Concord grapes and I did an after bath in an iron solution which grayed out some of that blue. For this one here, I used rose petals and rose leaves as well as orange pico tea. So I got some yellows and some oranges in there. And last but not least, I got this nice khaki sort of army green with some little white spots by tie dyeing with onion skins, just regular yellow onion skins. And then I did an after bath in iron as well for that. So these two were both done with iron. These two were both done with alum. So it just changed the colors a little bit as opposed to using, I don't know, a different mordant. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about natural dyes or seeing me do some dye experiments, I'll link my natural dye playlist below and some of my favorite natural dye videos that I've made so you can check out if it's something you might be into. But you don't need to use naturally dyed yarn, you can definitely just use any sort of one ply yarn. I'm gonna get started with the bluish gray. So the first thing you need is a slip knot. If you don't know how to do a slip knot, I will link my crochet uh, tutorial list down below as well. But as just a quick little clip of it, what I like to do is make a loop, turn the loop over on itself, stick my fingers into that hole, and use those fingers to grab the tail end of the yarn, pulling it through, just like that. Next, I'm going to chain 81. After I finish the chain, I'm going to double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook, and then I'm going to double crochet all the way across. At the end of the row, I will chain two and turn. Okay, so at this point, the Sweater measures 22 inches across or 56 centimeters. So it's double that. This is gonna be 44 inches around. It's gonna be nice and baggy on me. If you need something a little bigger than that, you can add to your chain at the beginning. Just add in groups of two. As long as you're adding two at a time. So I did 81. If you do 83, 85, 87, or you could do 79, 
and so forth, so forth. You could just make it bigger or smaller, but just keep it in pairs as you adjust the size, um, because this garment is actually really easy, and the only difficult part is the ribbing at the bottom. Everything else is gonna be so simple. You'll see. Okay, so after we've done that first row of double crochet, now we're going to get started on the rib stitch. If you've never done a rib stitch before, I will link down below my how to do a rib stitch tutorial, but I'll also talk through it in this video so you should be able to get the hang of it. We've done a chain two, and now what we're gonna do is something called a front post double crochet. So you wrap your yarn around your hook, and then you insert your hook behind the entire double crochet from the previous row. If you pull your yarn, pull your previous row apart, you can see these columns. When you wrap your yarn and then insert behind one of those columns, and then you complete a double crochet as normal, that's called a front post double crochet. The next stitch we do, which is in the next column, is a back post double crochet. So that one we wrap our yarn, and then we insert the hook behind the entire project, pulling it in front, so you're drawing that post back, and then you complete a double crochet as normal again. So that is a front post double crochet and a back post double crochet. And that is how you complete a rib stitch. You just repeat that pattern. Front post double crochet, back post double crochet. And we're gonna co complete that all the way across the row, one front post, one back post, one front post, one back post, all the way across until you get to the end of the row. At the end of the row, chain two and turn. If that was a little too fast for you, it's okay. Like I said, the tutorial for how to do that is linked down below. Okay, so now we are on row number three. And row number three is the same as row number two, except kind of the opposite. So in all of the places where we did front post double crochets on the last row, we're gonna do back post double crochets. And all of the spots where we did back post, we're gonna do front post. And what that's going to do is create these columns, these ribs. So it's not super clear yet what I'm trying to explain, but basically, you can see here, this was a back post double crochet on the previous row, but on this row, we're gonna treat it like a front post double crochet. And that's just gonna keep that column pulled in one direction. We wanna keep it going in the same way. If you were to switch it up and do it, do a back post double crochet there, you'd end up with sort of a cross hatch pattern. It's something beautiful. You can get a beautiful sort of basket weave look to it, um, but that's not what we're going for today. Today it is all about the rib stitch. So I'm just going to do that front post, back post, double crochet all the way across again. And then for row number four and row number five, I'm gonna repeat again. So for rows, for row number one, it's just double crochet, and then row two, three, four, and five, it's that front post double crochet, back post double crochet rib stitch. So I'm just gonna zoom through all the rest of my ribbing. If you've got any questions, definitely ask them in the comments below, and hopefully our community will be able to answer them, or I will. I always read the comments, and at some point, I always reply to them. But like I said, for the next few rows, I'm just going to zoom through them, getting that rib stitch complete. And I will come back when we are at the end of the rib. Okay, so I've just finished the rib stitch. So now you can see how those front post and back post double crochets create a really nice sort of bumpy rib stitch. I'm really happy with it. I love this about Briggs and Little Wool. Whenever I receive it, there's bits of hay in it. I love that. Anywho, now we're gonna move on to the body portion, which is super easy. Okay, so for the next part, the main part of the bodice, I'm going to switch in to the yellowy orange color next. 
My plan is to do some kind of stripey number with this one. Okay, and here is why this project is so easy. Um, the next step is just double crochets. So that's yarn over, insert your hook and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we're just gonna do that all the way across. And if you can see, I'm even making it easier for myself. I'm inserting my hook in the biggest hole between the two columns. I'm not inserting into the stitch itself. I'm inserting into the hole between the two columns. And I'm just going to double crochet all the way across. This is row number six. I'm actually gonna switch though. I'm gonna call this row number one now because it's a separate part of the um, sweater. So the rib stitch is rows one to five and then the body I'm gonna start again at one. So now, for rows one to six, I'm just going to double crochet all the way across. Nothing fancy, just a double crochet, simple double crochet for rows one to six. At the end of each row, I'm gonna chain two uh, and then I'm gonna turn. And I love how this is already color pooling. I, I dip dyed this one in two different colors and I love the colors, hopefully. I'll be able to get a better visual of these colors later on. Oh no, we've got a knot. All right, like I said, double crochet. If you don't know how to double crochet, that's okay. I've got a tutorial for that too, but before you go click that tutorial, just listen for one more time here and see if you can get it from this. We're gonna wrap the yarn around the hook, insert the hook into the big gappy stitch between the two posts, wrap your yarn around your hook again, and then pull that yarn through the hole, wrap your yarn around again, pull it through two of those loops, yep, wrap the yarn around again, and pull it through the other two. That's a double crochet. If that's not enough of an explanation, definitely check out my tutorial on double crochet. I've got a bunch of variations on it as well. Uh, but yeah, for the next six rows, I'm just gonna do this. my six rows with that yellow and now I'm going to switch it in to this sort of reddish brown. I'm calling it red because it feels red, but it's kind of a roan red or a reddish brown. Um, so I'm gonna finish my last stitch, tie it in, and then guess what? The next six rows are still gonna be double crochet, easy peasy, but this time I'm gonna do it, one and two. I'm gonna do it with this red color. So the next six rows are going to be double crochet with this red color. Hey, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. I put out new videos every Saturday and Sunday at 7 a.m. Eastern time. I also live stream at 7 a.m. Monday through Friday, so if you like live streams, you like chit chat about makes and foraging and natural dye and crochet, that sort of thing, definitely come join us on this channel 7 a.m. Eastern time every day of the week. And don't forget to like the video. It really helps out the channel. It helps push it into the recommended feed of more people so more people can find this video and videos like it. So definitely leave a like because it helps me out and because well, I guess that's pretty much it. If you like it, leave a like. Okay, so I've just finished with the reddish brown color and I'm going to transition now into the green khaki sort of army color. Um, I finished six rows in the brownish red and you guessed it, we're gonna do six rows in this khaki color. So for those of you at home keeping track, we're going to be at row 18 of the body part when we finish with the green. I'm still working in double crochets. I'm still working in the large gappy stitch. 
uh, the gappy space between stitches, I should say. Um, and I'm going to keep going with that double crochet all the way across, chain two at the end of each row, and just continue for six more rows. It's crazy to think that these colors came from plants. Blue Concord grapes, birch bark and tea, plum branches and tea. Very exciting. And now I'm on to onion skins. So I'm done with that red. I'll put that over there. And we'll keep going. I'm starting to realize that without even trying to, the colors are really working well with this turkey feather. They're very similar colors to what you're seeing in my turkey feather that I found out in the field. So I think that this might be named in some way something to do with a turkey. Maybe the turkey top or wild turkey something. I'll have to think about it throughout the rest of this video and I'll let you know what I'm ending up calling it. I'm going to go back now and do six more rows in that blue-gray color that we did for the bottom ribbing. Um, if you can't tell, we're still going to stay in the double crochet. I'm going to do another block of six and then I'm going to repeat the whole thing. So I'm going to do yellow, red, green one more time after I do the blue. So I'm going to do the blue on camera. I'll show you how it's looking and then I'm going to do the yellow, red, and green one more time. So for those of you keeping track at home, I'm going to be doing a total of 48 rows in the double crochet. If you want to make it longer, just go ahead and keep adding rows until it's the length that you want. If you're doing stripes like me in groups of six, then just stay in your groups of six. You can make it a shorter shirt by leaving out one row and you can make it longer by adding, or one block of color I should say, and you can make it longer by adding one block of color. It's totally up to you. Um, but for me, I'm going to end up with 48 rows of double crochet with a total of seven, um, seven color blocks and then the rib stitch at the bottom. Okay, friends, so I've just finished crocheting the entire piece, is it not? just magical. I'm very happy with how this is turning out. The second thing you've got to do is make a second one. So I did that off camera. I made a second piece. So now I've got two of them. One for the front of the sweater and one for the back. All done in double crochet except for that bottom rib stitch. And now this next part is important but um, perhaps not necessary. I'm going to block these out. So if you'd like a detailed video on how I block out my um, crochet projects, definitely let me know in the comments and I will film that. But for now, I'm going to block these out on my blocking mats and then soak them in some wool wash. And um, that's going to take all day for these to dry. Maybe it won't take that long because it's, it's very hot here. Like it's like 40 degrees Celsius. It is hot. But um, either way, I'm going to block those out and then the next step will be assembly. Don't you just love how this is coming along? I love the colors. I love how the color pooled for these patches here. I love the little freckles inside of the khaki color. Oh, I'm very excited. So I'll come back as soon as these are blocked and ready to sew together. Okay, so the garment is all blocked. I'm gonna just pull out all of the pins and then it'll be time to put it together. Okay friends, the sweater is finally dry. It only took way longer than I had originally planned, but now it's time for final assembly. So I can't do my regular old overhead shot because I busted the I busted the other lens. So I'm gonna have to put this together a little bit differently, but I'll make sure that you can see what I'm doing. So I've got two pieces here, a front piece and a back piece. They're both identical, so it doesn't matter which one is which. And I'm just gonna match them up 
like that. And then I'm going to just, from one corner, I'm doing the shoulder seams first. So, I'm going to use the same hook that I've been using for the whole project, and I'm just going to single crochet for, let me see how many stitches. One, two. I'm gonna do 21 stitches. Um, this is super customizable though. If you want yours to be more off the shoulder or if you want a tighter neckline, just keep going until you get to a point where you think it looks the way that you would want to look in a shirt, if that makes sense. Hope that makes sense. So I'm just connecting. I'm using the same green yarn uh, so that it matches. And then I'm just gonna connect the yarn with a a slip stitch and a chain one. Then I'm going to start single crocheting across. Three, 22, and 23. Okay, and then I'm just going to chain one, pull it tight, break the yarn. Then I'm going to flip the whole thing over and do the other shoulder. side seams. So I'm going to start from the bottom down here. Still just going to use the brown. I'm just going to single crochet all the way up the side. You could slip stitch and you could sew it. I just do a single crochet because it's easy and I like how it looks. color blocks as my sleeve hole. Um, so I'm going to just stop at the second, that blue section. There we go. One chain stitch and break it off. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Done. Okay, so the sewing portion is now done. The sweater is now put together. The only thing that is left is some finishing stitches. So I'm going to get the blue yarn and I'm going to do a row or two of single crochet around the neckline and around the arms just to make it look a little bit more finished. Um, but I'll give it a try on so that you can see what it looks like at this point. So it's kind of like an oversized poncho style t-shirty thing. So I'm going to do that now. 